Hey, you're back. I just got a quick one for you today. Got a new delivery. So today I'll be unboxing this. Hey Data, KDFI 1.4 plug and play. I'm super excited because finally getting some sort of performance. And what we're gonna find out today is if it really is just plug and play. Because I'm a bit skeptical. With these BMWs, nothing is always straightforward. So we'll see. If you've got an older Beamer, you've probably heard of these. They're a cheaper alternative to uh, Mega Squirt, basically. And I ordered the right one for my one, M52TU. Make sure you get the right um, one for your engine type. Let's see what we got. Sealed for my protection. Oh la la. New brain for the Beamer. Looks pretty good. Also pins if you want to add anything. In Deutsch and in English. These are obviously from Germany. I also ordered um, wideband O2 sensor, which you will probably need, and another cord which is an adapter for it. Yeah, that plugs into that. And then this into that one by the looks. So that's your O2 sensor. And then right next to the O2 sensor, little pipe there, that's the onboard uh, map sensor. That's what's awesome about this. Like if you want to go turbo in the future or whatever, you've got the options to, you can get rid of the airflow sensor and just go map sensor straight into the ECU. And then you've got a wideband, everything you need for engine management and turbo, basically. You can get these in Bluetooth and non-Bluetooth versions. I got the Bluetooth version. This was around 760. Um, all these cables and everything came to about 140. These cost a little bit more with the with the Bluetooth version, but not a ton more, so it's probably worth it. And shipping was AU about sixty dollars or so. Landed here in Australia, all of this was about a thousand bucks, and it only took two weeks, which is awesome. So I thought it'd be like a month from Germany, but pretty good. This is all metal case too. I know it looks plastic, but it's actually metal. There we go. Pretty identical as they should except the back obviously I still wanted to have this COM port connected in case I have Bluetooth issues now I realize there's actually like two ECU compartments in here and this one actually sits the one that this is where the factory one is but this one actually sits up a bit higher which means I've got clearance for, to run the cord under there so it won't get sort of jammed if I push it down and then that way I can feed it out of the box somewhere and have it all enclosed I've just fed the USB cable through that gap there and then hopefully should be able to go down without getting jammed. Let's see. Okay, <laughs> that wasn't the case at all. It did hit and then I had to pull this whole thing out, which wasn't too hard, just a couple of plugs. It just sits in the hole here and then I had to notch a little bit out of the plastic there so I could feed this down. ECU should go in now. And there we go. Now that clears everything. You want to be careful of this port. You don't want to damage that because you're kind of screwed then. It looks pretty good. Put this all back together. Oh, and look at that. In behind here, there's a convenient little hole into the passenger side. Because this box is all sealed, it doesn't really have to have a, like a grommet going to the inside of the car. So that's awesome. It just comes out. Yeah. Look, that I guess will be like my OBD port now. All right, we've got the ECU back in. We've run our USB cable, so now we can connect it to the laptop. Actually, yeah, we might do that next video. I'll, we'll download Tuna Studio and we'll see if we can connect it and maybe we can do some practice tuning, like play with the rev limiter or even maybe we can do a ghost cam for shits and giggles. All right, moment of truth. Now, I'm curious to know if this still has EWS coded into it, uh, which is like the immobilizer system, basically, for BMW. And there's a way to check that. Foil, put it around the key, because that should block the signal. Foil around the key. Yeah, nothing. 
but does still have EWS built in, which you'd assume they would because for a street application, you wouldn't want... Shut up. You wouldn't want this to get nicked. That's one way to test. If your Beamer has EWS deleted, if you put foil around the key and it still starts, then it's been deleted. That goes for any car immobilizer that reads a key. Foil should block the signal and that way you'll know. All right, taking on a little test run. Feels pretty much the same as you'd expect. It's hard to judge though. All right, and there's one more thing I want to add with this ECU. Uh, it's its alpha N based tune, meaning airflow sensor is obsolete. So, yeah, it does nothing. So basically, Alpha N Tune uh, uses a, a, the TPS reference, a throttle position, instead of measuring the airflow. So one benefit of that is you can do away with this, have less restriction in there. Most factory ECUs will revert back to an Alpha N Tune anyway if there's they lose reference from the airflow sensor. That's how I diagnose my faulty airflow sensor in episode 15. Yeah, so it doesn't want to know about it. There you go. And hot tip, these E46 MAF or airflow sensors share a part number with Hyundai Sonata. So if you go to BMW and they want to charge you a fortune, cross-reference the part number and make sure that the Hyundai Sonata one that you see on eBay or whatever is the same number and you'll be sweet. This KDFI ECU can reference manifold pressure through a MAP sensor inbuilt. And we've also got the wideband O2 sensors for turbo applications basically.